Okay, and here we are playing King David, the campaigns of. Took tires turn really quick. They left a force here. You don't want to make things too easy on the Philistines, right? You want to leave something there uh, just to make sure that they don't come slamming in and grab an important city of yours. Uh, they managed to shift some of their troops around to face the Aramean threat and also marched in here to Ijean and defeated the force that was there and withdrew after one round of combat. They actually, uh, the Arameans did fairly well in the battle. They were outnumbered but they caused the same amount of casualties. Now here the Tyrians are sitting here with essentially they have 2d6 plus 3. Chances are they could kill one of the this. So the question is, do they want to take the fortress? I think the answer is yes. My first thought was, nah, I'm weak. But to tell you the truth, that's probably as good as I'm going to get. I get 2d6 plus 3. I'm going to almost guarantee to take it. And it's only going to get a d10 against me. Remember, it's only d6 because it's a siege attack. So let's make sure I'm going to take it. And I succeed in rolling high enough. Uh, wow, that wasn't that guaranteed, was it? Um, okay. And then it gets to come back with a d10. Now, if I can't roll a 6 or higher, I don't kill anything. And I do not. So Tyre takes the city. And now uh, they essentially have a victory point. Because they've gained a territory... Uh, they've gained a city that they didn't have before, and they haven't lost one yet. How many more do they need to win the game? Uh, it's not close. You really do have to play this out for a certain length. So they need six more. They need a total of seven additional cities. Basically, there's no cheap way here. You, you have to advance against... Um, you know, you have to become something of a power in the game and enhance her size quite a bit. They have not quite the easiest. Moab has the easiest. They might be able to get by. If they defeat Edom, they get four cities from that. A fifth one here, they could get uh, Amon as well. Um, you know, they could win without really threatening anyone. Of course, people would notice their claws. All right, so now we're going on to Moab indeed. Okay, so moving on into the Moab turn, I'm going to do this in a little detail. They've moved one of their forces forward into this empty space. They've got uh, an extra chariot that they could have pushed forward a little further. They didn't want to do that. Um, they can't take the city easily with a chariot. And they don't have enough extra movement to go into the hills. But now they're going to, their plan was to invade Edom. Uh, so... They've got a lot of forces on the border here. As they do this, um, as the intention is announced, everyone else has a die roll, a d10, with some modifiers. Now the modifiers are the same ones in an alliance event, which means you can spend some money and stuff on them. How this is going to be ordered, hey, who cares? You know, this is one of the things, and I'll try to touch on this in my reviews, but somebody brought up uh, how the game, you know, is lacking some maybe clarifications on the rules and some understanding. You know, back in the day, I'm used to picking up a game like this, very much like this, maybe with a little bit more detail in the rules, but often, you know, and this is opposed, not just solitaire, having at some point in the middle of the game to come up with a rules interpretation. Big deal. You know, that's what gaming used to be a big, uh, that used to be a big portion of gaming, to tell you the truth. Uh, so, anyway, in this case, well, just so long as everybody puts their money in before any rolls are made, I don't see a problem. And I do it openly. I, the ordering is not the, so the specifics here is that one person 
who's making the alliance chooses their money first and then everybody and then other people are allowed to throw in well there's no one person here so so what <laughs> um, okay so now the bribery is one resource point per plus one and then adjacent forces well nobody's got anything adjacent to Edom except Moab so nobody gets that bonus uh, Judea is probably interested, or Judah, sorry. Um, so let's look and see if they have any modifiers in place. Here, because I think they have a few. Judah has a minus one on Moab or Edom. Yeah, Moab's a major player and a minus two on some of the others. Well, Judah's interested to tell you the truth. They would like to control Edom. It might actually end up turning them against Moab as an early attack, although they do have to worry about the Philistines, rather than maybe their current situation. Are they willing to pay for that advantage? Ah, uh, geez, I don't know. And everybody else is really tied down. They don't care one bit. I'll roll a quick die to see if Judah's willing to spend some resources. Now, for them, resources are kind of not very uh, available. And if we look at costs, costs in units to build is in resources. Cost in maintenance is more towards food. Resources... I, I, I think they don't want to pay, but I'll look. Okay, they're not going to pay. So then I just make a roll for everyone and then set up those forces. I'll come back after that's done. All right, so Tyre ended up winning. Now, they can't move Edom outside, the, the forces outside of their home country. They're just a defensive thing here. It would have been possible, see, if the Philistines had won Edom, that maybe they didn't really want Maybe they wouldn't mind Moab growing. Maybe they could have come to some sort of agreement to let Edom lose the fight and to actually play them poorly. Uh, that's kind of one of the disadvantages of this kind of open, very easy system, as opposed to, say, something like, I don't know, Europa Universalis, where there's sort of a risk for playing the, uh, the minor powers. If you own them, well, if you kind of play poorly with them, you're going to pay a penalty in victory points. In something like Empires in Arms, though, you have this same kind of uh, situation where really, well, it's not exactly the same because a player has to express an interest in defending in order to be penalized for failing. But if nobody defends, uh, then the country just surrenders immediately. In, in this kind of game, it is kind of a shame that you could kind of betray one of your, your minor powers. But, yeah, you know, it's a lightweight game. And in most cases, it won't happen. Here, it's not going to happen. And now the Moab are looking and saying, we got some tough fights in front of us. We really do. Just to gain that first space is going to be hard. We're not positioned to fight um, terribly well here. Because we're facing a chariot here. And we just don't have much. So this may have been more than we wanted to bite off. We'll move into here our chariots. Uh, chariots are as good as infantry, but the key may be they're no better. But we're gonna just wipe up. Uh, yeah, I can't get there. Okay. I don't know if I'm gonna do that. Um, This force looks stronger than this one, 
So I'm going to go in here to fight, and here, again, I think I've got a stronger force here. I'll move there to fight, and I'll move here to help cover in case there's, well, there can't be a counterattack. Great. So I'll move here. It's kind of a pity. I wish the miners could grow on their own. <laughs> but again, that would require a lot more effort and a lot more rules to cover. Uh, so, we'll come back after the fights. So I'm in the midst of a combat. Uh, I just finished this one. That succeeded. I'm in the midst of this one and haven't even dealt out the damage, I think, to the Moabs. I've taken a significant amount. But... Now I'm beginning to see some of those inconsistencies. So you're allowed to move a stack of four units normally. You're allowed to move more units with a leader. Now I missed a couple of things in my play. I haven't played with many leaders. I haven't used many leaders yet. For example, this guy. I don't know if I explained this in, in my uh, rules overview, but a leader allows you to move twice as far. Kind of a Britannia feel there. Right? Uh, you get twice as many movement points with that stack. So there's a reason that a stack needs a leader to move, but there's no real reason for the four leader, for the four unit limit. Which is to say, as the game is written, it looks like, yeah, I can move a stack of four units, but once I'm in combat, any number of units can fight, so I can slap as many guys into a space as I like and have these huge combats. Question is, do you do I want that or not? Because the options are as follows: If I don't allow, if if somehow you, I add some rule, because I feel like something, something if if nothing's added, the game allows these huge combats, and I don't see a real problem with that. But by adding one thing, you could say, okay, well, once you move into a space, that's the combat, and you can't throw more pieces in or something. I don't think that makes sense. I think that's a modification that's not going to work with the game. But another modification that might work is you're only allowed as many units in combat as you're allowed to stack. Which is kind of what I think I've been playing with essentially. And why I have stacks of only four units. Because otherwise you'd have the entire army collecting at this one important space if they can move to that. And of course they could. They could have all set up here and moved in little stacks of four or one or whatever. So, by putting that stacking limitation on the combat, I think I'm capturing the effect and the desire of the game. Now, if there are still units there, though, you still got to keep pumping them into the combat and, and risking them. It's just how many units you have involved in the combat is a limited amount. Anyway, that's how I'm fudging this. It's not clear in the rules. It's not handled in the rules. There's no good way. Uh, you know, you either have to look online or make something up. Basically, this is one thing that shaking a game out solo tends to do. I tend to come up with a few of these instances, and if there are weaknesses in the rules, and if I want to, if the game is worth, you know, repairing, like I think this one is, you do it. So there was another thing that I forgot, and I forgot to mention that I forgot it, that I had fixed when looking at those rules, was that every time you attack a new area, you have to pay a resource. So uh, Aramea made two attacks. They paid resources for those. Uh, Tyre made one. They paid a resource for that. And now Moab has made two attacks, and they had to pay two resources for that. The more areas that you have to attack, the broader a front you have, the more expensive it's going to be to advance. Which is one reason why spreading out is kind of cool anyway. Um, okay, so now we see the Moab won this other battle. Basically, Edom retreated, but now we have an event. And this is number 24 in their hand. Recruit prisoners. This event is played at the end of any combat section of the action phase. Uh, not clear what a combat section of the action phase really is. These things aren't well defined. You get to gain units equal to the number and type of enemy units eliminated during the just ending combat. Mm. 
Am I misplaying the action phase? Because that would explain this thing. If you moved one stack at a time and had to fight with it, well then, stacking your units makes in, in, incredible defenses. Like, your cities won't be taken because you put a big army there. That does not appear to be the way the game is worded, but it's not clear. I mean, it's possible that it is. I don't see any indication of that, though. And I wanted to go with what it felt like the more... Yeah, this looks like you move all your units, conduct combat, and then resolve sieges. So, what is the combat section? And, you know, one would say, okay, that should be the piece of the action phase, right? In which case, both these battles count. On the other hand, the way this event is worded... It's the just ending combat. I'm gonna have it be one combat. I'd rather not have the events be too powerful. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna play recruit prisoners, this event. And these are very pretty, they look like. Other than the thickness of the counters, which is, they're very heavy duty. Uh, they almost look like Azor Wish type things. Okay, and now there were two units eliminated in this battle. Both just garbage. Uh, militia, but the Moab are going to draw for two resources, cost one each, two new militia to put in that space for themselves. And so now they have recuperated some of their losses at a very cheap cost. Okay, well that's the end of the Moab turn. And we'll move forward and hit the Judah turn, but I'm going to upload this.